I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and prostrate ourselves because of Cinnamon by Jason Brown. Hey guys, we are back for part three of three of our US Nationals recap. Our first recap episode, we did ladies. Part two of our recap, we did pairs and ice dance. And here we are with men's, our final recap episode. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about. I feel like we are in like mile 20 of our marathon. (laughs) We're almost there, but not quite. (laughs) we've still got a long way to go yes Um, i have a beautiful bowl of strawberries in my toddler child's dish i thought you were going to say spaghetti (laughs) spaghetti oh i would so do well with a bowl of spaghetti and meatballs i mean i love spaghetti so now i just want spaghetti but i guess i'll have to make (laughs) do with strawberries thanks claudia (laughs) (laughs) you're welcome Um, All right, let's start off with some news about the men's event and let's start with the withdrawal of Andrew Togashev. And this was actually not COVID related. This was due to um, his injury and how he hasn't had enough time to recover from it. So we hope that your recovery is going speedily and very, very well and hope to see you on the ice very, very soon. It's very unfortunate because I think Andrew Togashev, he's one of those ones that are kind of have been up and coming for a while. It would have been really nice to see him at now. Nationals, but you know only only the best for his recovery the second piece of news that of course we have like in our other episodes is that USFS has announced their picks for the world's team and I really don't think any of these three men are surprising <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> they have all been working so hard and I think are head and shoulders above their competition uh, we have of course Jason Brown <laughs> that sitter man show program okay I'll stop until we get there no <laughs> uh, we have Nathan Chen, of course, and also Vince, Vincent Joe. And our alternates are, the first alternate is Tomoki Hiwatashi. Our second alternate is Maxim Naumov. And our third alternate is Camden Polkinen. And it is also to note that our pewter medalist at this event, uh, Yaroslav Paniot, he cannot go to Worlds at all. Uh, not because they didn't pick him, but because there are citizenship issues. Um, he cannot skate for the States at Worlds. Um, I think it's until next season. Don't quote me on that. But it's definitely... Um, confirmed that he cannot skate at Worlds this season for the States, uh, even though he did so well here. And he could have... So unfortunate. Yeah, and I I definitely think that he would have been chosen as an alternate uh, had he been able to go to Worlds this year. But we'll talk about him a little bit later. Yes, definitely. But let's start with... Probably one of our favorite people, uh, surprise people from this men's event, and that is Mitchell Freeze. He is 23. His Insta bio says, figure skater, fractal enthusiast, and turtle lover. And I think that's one of the best bios I've ever read. Um, he, Judging by his Insta, he really enjoys scuba diving and recently graduated from the University of Utah with a degree in bioengineering and biomedical engineering, which are stopping talented people at US Nationals. Everyone with their brains. Um, your I brains, know. I tell you. You don't see brains like this except for the kids' table at Halloween, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing I've ever said in my life. I'll never say that again. <laughs> Uh, But like we've said in previous episodes, both of us are sitting, uh, drinking, eating chips and recording this podcast. (laughs) So We feel really good about ourselves. Um, Mitchell, this is his senior nationals debut. And although he came in last place, which is 17th, we found him so enjoyable. He was... uh, like a ray of sunshine mainly also not only because of his like gorgeous personality but because of the music he chose for his skates this is like the music that i would make if i was skating okay so his short program was to ghost town by adam lambert and uh adam lambert is always guest on the masked singer my favorite show in the entire world (laughs) (laughs) just fly some masked singer trivia for you if you have the same (laughs) niche as i do uh and his free skate is to waving through a window and for forever from dear evan dear evan hansen i I literally cried i was about five seconds into that free skate and i cried (laughs) 
Oh, I was I was preparing myself for it because I knew I was going to like be tearing up too. Um, but let's talk about his technical content in the short program. He did a double axle to open. He was the only man in the field who didn't do a triple axle or didn't attempt a triple axle. He didn't have a great short though. He went down on the triple lutz as well as the triple flip um, and he scored 48.88. But nevertheless, I think one of the best moments of the men's event was Mitchell coming back to the kiss and cry and his face oh just gosh. lighting just up so bright human. when he saw the kiss and cry wall such a sweet human like it doesn't matter how he did I, oh, I I couldn't it was so so heartwarming I think just seeing him like we said this is his senior nationals debut I think he was just, you know, really, really happy to see his friends and family supporting him in the Kiss and Cry. And also, I noticed that because he is a turtle lover, which he states in his Instagram bio, he also had a turtle <laughs> mask that he wore in the Kiss and Cry. Oh, I was like, of course you have a turtle so mask. Cute. This is your spirit. This is the type of spirit that oh, you spirit carry animal. with you. It's amazing. Um, but unfortunately, he did come 17th. He just didn't really have the technical content. He just didn't really have the base value. Like we were saying, he was the only man to not have a triple axle or attempt a triple axle. But we were just really happy to see him. Yeah. Okay. Did Was it just me who saw this? But for the Deer of Hansen free skate, in the middle of his program, did you see, did, like, did he do choreo for the hand sign for help? Like in the transition between waving through a window and for forever, I thought I noticed that. I didn't see I that. I noticed that. But I if like, you did, oh, then I. Oh my we god, stand. we stand. Absolutely. Um, we highly enjoyed Mitchell Freeze's skates. Um, just we assigned the rainbow emoji to him because that's how he made us feel. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, so let's move on to our next skater which is Alexei Krasnishan. He's 20 years old, coached by Alexei Latov and Olga Genacheva, and that's the same camp as Jimmy Ma and a bunch of other skaters. Some of them are in pairs, but great skating club of Boston crew, super. Um, he came seventh in Skate America. His USFS bio says that he's working on writing a book and that his hobbies include snowboarding, mountain biking, reading, swimming, and computer programming. Um, he did not have a good short program it was pretty awful actually he um he so did so upset with oh, himself Poor guy. yeah it was it was really rough to watch he came 16th in the short he started off with a quad loop attempt it was called under he fell then he fell on the triple axle he caught his heel on the landing um he also went down on the triple flip triple loop which the loop was called under it and it looked hella wild in the air as well he slipped off the toe on the landing uh he also got an invalid spin. There were also like uh, rotation violations in two of his spins. So overall, just a shocker of a program, to be honest. He scored 54.53, had four deductions. Which is not usually what no, he scores. not at this all. This is not, not where Definitely. he's at. And it's just rough to fall on every single jumping pass and have like violations in your spins. Like it, it, rough big big rough time however he did come back for the free skate he came in seventh in the free skate which landed him 11th overall he skated to dracula and hence why we assigned the dracula emoji to him <laughs> he landed his quad loop attempt it was called under um the jumps that he reeled off were a triple axle double toe a triple axle q a triple sow a uh, triple flip, triple loop. Flip was called with an exclamation mark. He also did triple lutz, double toe, double loop, and another triple lutz. So good job from him on the jumps front. Um, he did, though, get a level one in the step sequence. Um, oh, my gosh. But, like, yeah, oh, level Lexi. one. And his spins uh, are just, oof. they're very, very slow. He is a slow spinner. Not his, Spins aren't his strong suit by any means. They're not his no. forte. Two though. out of three spins had v so feature violations and his flying camel spin level three had negative goe but he was very very happy with himself at the end in that choreo sequence he let it all out and then at the end he it was very intense so intense Much at intense. the end he looked like his eyes were so they looked like crazed eyes it was like he was like a raging bull um it was kind of scary. It was very interesting because when, as he was screaming to himself at the end, behind him were the flower crown Mariah Bell 
flat cardboard <laughs> cutout behind behind oh the bunny sorry the flower the crown bunny that says Mariah and the Bell Nathan the Chen bunny. hamster and the Nathan Chen hamster it was just a very stark contrast between what was happening on the ice and his his uh rodent yeah. friend spectators. I think I just said Nathan <laughs> Chen no I meant Nathan Chen I was like hamster Nathan Chamster maybe <laughs> um <laughs> Nathan <laughs> Chamster no stop <laughs> I'm on Jackie. I'm on Jackie Wong's level of bad puns, no, which is it's stop. all I aspire to do. Never saying that again. Um, but Alexi in the Gist and Cry was like, "Hello to Twitter fans and haters, everybody." <laughs> Twitter fans and haters. <laughs> but he. <laughs> He scored 153.33 in the free skate, which gave him an overall score of 207.76. He also got 76 points for PCS. And I was like, okay. All right. That's interesting. Uh, But that free skate score is definitely uh, usually kind of in the range of what we see from him. The short program is that was just super not his day. He was so unhappy with himself um, that I actually mildly appreciate this from uh, the Peacock cam uh, because at Russian Nationals, they really zoomed in on this one. I I totally forget who it was who was so upset. And I was like. We do not need to concentrate on this man. Uh, but no. I appreciate that when Alexi was super upset, they cut to um, a clip of Nathan bouncing a basketball backstage. So in the warm up. So, <laughs> so I yes. mean, Thank you, I, I appreciate that they did not amplify uh, his his upsetness, sadness. Yeah. his sadness. That's the word. I'm looking sadness. For. Upsetness. Definitely. Oxford Dictionary approved. Upsetness. Um, right next to Nathan Chamster <laughs> in the dictionary. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to before the competition even started. Before I even saw what his face looked like or his skating, I knew I stand this next skater because of the music choices. Oh my and god, I've, of course, fave. talking about Din Tran, 19 years old, coached by D Goldstein and Jeremy Abbott. Short program, Puss in Boots soundtrack, free program, Sherlock Holmes soundtrack. It's just perfect. It is perfect. So, so, oh so my good. gosh. Love oh it. my gosh. I have a lot to say about this Me too. music. I, okay. So first okay, of all, go. I didn't know the Puss in Boots soundtrack sounded like this. My <laughs> husband, I was like, did you know? Because I was watching it with him. I was literally like, did you know that the Puss in Boots soundtrack sounded like this? And he was like, Antonio Banderas was in Puss, Puss in Boots. And I was like, I have no Puss in Boots trivia knowledge. I when it first came on, I was like, "This sounds like Javier Fernandez in Boots." I was like, <laughs> "Where?" Is this? And then my husband was so aghast that I knew nothing about this film that he was like, "Maybe we should watch Puss in Boots for research." And I was like, "I think I'm gonna pass, but thank you." Oh Thanks my god, for the Javier help. Fernandez in Boots! What a picture! I would. I would pay money to see that, actually. I, I'd pay money to see anything by Javier Fernandez, honestly. Um, but we loved Din Tran. Not only were his costumes on point, but just him as a person. Uh, he skates out of the Skating Club of San Francisco, and that's where Joss is from. Oh, not, well, not from. She's Canadian, but that's where she lives. And that's where I live. In San Fran. Uh, and he also, in his USFS bio, says that he serves lunch to homeless folks <sighs> at a local shelter. <laughs> love him love, love him, him. Um, he, he also currently attends California State University Long Beach he enjoys playing flute teaching skating uh, all around so 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 good and very very impressed not only with Din but Jeremy Abbott decided to double mask it the entire weekend so like we we Maybe love a work some Jeremy tips Abbott. to Zach Donahue who uh if you didn't oh, listen to the previous episode yeah. was uh mildly uh, expressing his distaste about wearing a mask, mask and not being able to breathe in the kissing cry. If Jeremy Abbott can breathe through two masks, so you can, can do Zach. it too, Zachary. You can do it. But <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> we love Jeremy Abbott anyhow. Um, and he did wonderful with Din Tran. Puss in Boots soundtrack, short program, had a great opening triple axle. He has huge height on his toe jumps. The landings are a little shaky. There needs to be some polish, but I mean, he only recently started working with Jeremy Abbott. 
And there was this article that we found um, online where he only has like three hours of lessons a week. And oh, the talent in this guy is insane. He did a triple lutz, triple toe. The triple flip was landed bang on the music. So good. Although there were a lot of negative GOEs from his jumping passes. But the back half of his program, uh, there were two level four spins and a step sequence level four that got positive GOEs that landed him... 10th in the short with 74.03. Yes, and the Sherlock Holmes soundtrack. Uh, his costume was actually a recycled costume, which I hate that word, but it's a costume that uh, another skater had previously used also to skate Ricky to a Sherlock Don't Holmes Bush. soundtrack. Love it. And it looks Love fantastic it. on him, by the way. does. Shout out to Ricky Dornbush. We missed your skating. It was awesome. Another great skater who skated to Sherlock Holmes, obviously. Um, but... The costume is now handed down to Ding Tran, who did very, very well. Yeah, um, there were a few, definitely some mistakes uh, with the Lutz and the loop. Also, you could tell with his triple axle as it went up into the air that it really wouldn't be it. Huge yeah, lane. but but he somehow <laughs> managed to stay on his feet. Um, and the thing that I really love, very cat-like. Yeah, the thing that I really love about like a puss in boots, <laughs> skating boots. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's all coming together. <laughs> They always say that that when a cat falls, they land on their feet. Yeah, land on their feet. <laughs> and Puss in Boots, Detective Puss in Boots, Sherlock Holmes. It's, it's a all whole story. coming together. It, it's it's a concept. As Celine skate, Dion says, like a concept it's album. all coming back to me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing that I really love about Din is that uh, he skates really big. Uh, like he really he does, does yeah. skate to entertain the folks that are sitting in the back row. Yes. Uh, I really just enjoy his presence on the ice. And Me too. Uh, he managed to finish top 10 here. So he landed in 10th place overall. In the free skate, he all of his spins were a level four and he had a level four step sequence. So good. Um, although I, in terms of his jump technique, he chicken wings his arms midair. So definitely there's room to get uh, tighter air positioning, which would probably help um, control his jumps and his landings and all of that. But He's 19, like great outing at nationals. We really, really enjoyed him and cannot wait to see more of him in the future. And I do love a good chicken wing. <laughs> I mean, I don't love True, chicken wing arm very, very yummy, but I do very... love a good chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, let's move on to our eighth place finisher. And that is Mr. Camden Polkinen. Oh my gosh. It is a hard life for a Camden Polkinen fan. Let me just hard tell you. <laughs> You should skate to the Annie soundtrack now. Um, it's a but, hard knock oh, life for a Camden Polkan fan. Yeah. I reckon he'd actually do good with the Annie soundtrack. Um, either way, his USFS bio says that he studies business and finance at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Uh, his hobbies include piano, guitar, hiking, biking, skateboarding, running, swimming, and art. That's a lot of hobbies, but like they're good hobbies. Um, Who has the time? Yes. Okay. Before I say anything, the emoji that we have assigned to Camden is the number four. <laughs> and if you if you know, you know. Hello, Twitter people. But after we talk about his skates, you'll probably understand why. <laughs> so let's start off with his short program. It's to Caruso by Josh Groban and Andrea Pacelli. And it is the tribute program to Dennis Tan. Oh my gosh, this is literally one of my favorite programs. But Camden, Camden. <laughs> get it together, sir. <laughs> So he popped the quad toe into a double toe, oh. which made the element invalid because it was only a double. He did pull off the triple axle though, so great. The triple let's triple toe combo was right on the music. And I was just like, this music taste though is like literally the same as Karen's, Karen Chen's. It's just an octave lower. <laughs> um. <laughs> literally. Uh, also, speaking of the music taste, it was a very yes. drastic shift in mood because immediately when his program was over, uh, they switched the music. The DJ switched the music to Enrique Iglesias. And I was like, <laughs> this is such a such a change. Very, very different energy. <laughs> very, very true. Um, he got a level four step sequence. So on Twitter, somebody tweeted after Karen Chen's performance that um, it, was, it was actually quite hilarious. Um, like... Karen, you can't be getting level two on your spins. You are, uh, you're not your boyfriend. And <laughs> like Camden, 
found it. It Camden was funny already, them. but then Camden found it and he replied OMG with the crying emoji. <laughs> and I was like, Camden, stop. Take the bird app away from him. I know. Um, and then obviously because of that, I live tweeted, um, you best be sure that he's going to try and get level four in his fins today. <laughs> And he doesn't want to be blasted on Twitter again. <laughs> but it, we say we all say it out of love because he is so well loved in social media. Um, I'm such so a much Camden talent. fan. I know, me such too. A Camden fan. And not all of his spins were level four, though. Two of them were, but he did get one level two spin in the change foot sit spin. Uh, there's one level two, Camden. And then, okay, to be after after his short program, I was just like, mm, maybe we can get uh, we can get another four in the rotations when you do your quad toe tomorrow for the free program. <laughs> And he liked Unfortunately, it. we did not. No, we didn't. In his free skate, the quad toe uh, became a triple toe. Oh, that's one extra rotation. We'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take what I can get. Uh, the jumps, unfortunately, were not great quality all around. He was he lost a ton of GOE. This is just the chaos of being a Camden Polkinen fan, I guess. Uh, um, but the big the big place where he lost a bunch of points was that he fell on the triple axle and he could not tag on another jump. So he lost those combo points, a ton of points on the table. And I also saw him at the end of the program. He was leaning down and touching his ankle. So mm, I hope that he's damn. OK. Yeah, me too. Hopefully it's just a little niggle that isn't anything too serious. But, you know, one, Camden, one day you'll skate clean and we will be waiting for you then. Um, however... However, he did have, um, in the Kiss and Cry, he had a really cute, like, baby Avengers mask on. And I was like, okay, Oh, is that what it was? I forgive you. I'm not a Marvel I was like, fan, I forgive you. So. Oh. Okay, can you explain to our listeners, um, our two listeners, why you <laughs> aren't a Marvel <laughs> fan? <laughs> our listeners who are my friends and who literally know that I don't like Marvel because I've been talking to them about it for years hi mom i, I mean it, it really just all comes down to the fact that i don't like mus- or movies with real humans in them and also okay this is also why i don't like marvel so it, at disneyland they um closed a bug's land and that was in california adventure and this was the place where like little kids would go and basically like splash around. There's a Heimlich choo-choo train. It's okay. It's not a choo-choo train. It's a C-H-E-W, C-H-E-W train (laughs) because it literally takes you through all of the yummy foods that Heimlich enjoys eating, such as watermelon, animal crackers, and candy corn. Spoilers. I mean, not spoilers because the ride doesn't exist anymore, (laughs) but they evicted all of these animals from their homes to install Marvel land. And I was like, Excuse me, the planet is dying. Mother Nature is suffering here. Why must you do this? I'm so upset. Animals are going extinct on a daily basis. And this is what you do? Is this bug (laughs) gentrification? Like, I'm so upset about this. Okay, I'll stop. But Camden, maybe I'll send you a new mask. (laughs) A bug's life mask? A bug's life mask. I'm going to send him a bug's life mask. Or maybe that will cause him to skate clean. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. In a bug's land, there was this ride. Okay, we're called, still going. Uh, it was basically Francis the Ladybug, and it spins like the teacup ride. Maybe he'll have level four spins if he if I send him a Francis mask. Look, if you don't try, you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay. God. Um, That's but Camden, take the bird app away from me too. <laughs> Camden landed in eighth in the short program. He got 80.08 in the free skate. He got 140.02, which gave him an overall score of 220.10. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to seventh place finisher. Another one of our favorites, Tomoki Hiwatashi. Uh, Tomoki Hiwatashi did not have the outing that he was looking for here. He was fourth at Skate America and typically finishes around fourth or fifth uh, in this group of men. Um, but here, I think he definitely did not skate how he wanted to. However, he did come third last year at the U.S. Championships. Though. He did. He did. He did. Um, but probably not the placing that he was looking for here. But I do have to say, as a quick side note, that so his short program is to standards by Leslie Odom Jr. And Leslie Odom Jr. was on fire 
on the bird app again um but he was on fire on the on figure skating twitter he quote tweeted a bunch of people and he liked our tweet like i'm dead I, i can die peacefully now he he took his thumb and press like on our tweet leslie odom jr i just can't and i'm not even like a big celebrity person but like leslie odom jr unless it comes to jesse mccartney okay i love jesse mccartney (laughs) have you ever seen that tiktok that's like okay teenagers in the 2000s whenever the first few notes a beautiful soul come on and it's just like this guy like doing a shoulder shake <laughs> that's me okay I, we're gonna Big we're veering there. too far okay off tomoki, of tomoki 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 um short program he popped the quad toe into a double toe like camden so uh, invalid element but uh triple axel landed decent enough uh good say from a lean in the um in the triple axel uh his russian split though like oh best russian split in the business his feet are by his ears literally like jazz and contemporary dancers they are really jealous of tomoki watashi's russian split because they wish they could do that he had a lovely like high kick in the short program i truly love this short and how tomoki skates it although he did get like quite ordinary goes mostly like plus ones and plus twos except for the step sequence which he got the top of the range goes which like of course because he sells it so well yeah, he is a huge personality. He skates really big. Even though he is of a little bit of a smaller stature, he skates huge. I love just the personality and the volume with which he skates. Um, but I think he was actually pretty dejected after he had popped that first quad toe. And the remainder of the program was a little bit just kind of like messy here and there, which probably attributed to those kind of regular GOEs, um, yeah. as we say. Uh, but it was so interesting because... <laughs> He has this dog that appeared on his friends and family cam, and there was, like, no human with this dog. So it was literally just the dog operating the computer. (laughs) Just the dog dog was operating the computer. But his dog looks exactly like my dog. So I was like... Yeah, it's a Can Terrier. Yeah, I was like, is my dog a Tomoki Hiwatashi fan? I mean, good taste, but, like... Maybe you should get Puppins in front of the TV and maybe Puppins will, like, bark or wave. Oh, my gosh. I was a little bit worried because not only uh, did my dog appear on TV without my notice but my dog was also operating my computer and had somehow infiltrated the tomoki <laughs> hiwatashi kiss and cry cam on my computer very worrisome but <laughs> nevertheless uh let's talk about his free skate um he oh my gosh he attempted a quad lutz at the start of this program it didn't work uh but he did stay on his feet yes it was called under he said he has rotated it but good attempt it came out of nowhere for me because i didn't see the planned elements list but he followed that attempt up with a quad toe triple toe that was beautiful turned out of the triple axle and the rest of the program was it was it was decent um he got high sevens and low eights for pcs Like in the short program, low GOE protocol for him, mainly plus ones and plus twos with his step sequence being the exception, step and choreo sequence being the exception with plus fours and fives. I found that he really had to kind of like save a lot of these jumps. He, especially in the second half of this program, he didn't really quite perform it to the volume that like we know that he can. Yeah. You know, I think that just kind of overall, he wasn't really like feeling it with this whole I think just both programs Mm -hmm. in general it was not really his competition which is really unfortunate because he did so well at Skate America did so well at last year's nationals I think this was pretty disappointing for him in general yeah he also left quite a few points on the table in his spins he got level three level two level three with a uh, feature violation so definitely not the best from Tomoki but you know he has so much talent it's honestly insane how much talent this guy has. So uh, very excited for next season. Hopefully he skates cleaner. I mean, he's only 20. <laughs> he's time. It's a bit nuts. Um, his time, definitely. And we'd love to see him skate for countless seasons. So yes, seventh place to Moki Hiwatashi uh, with an overall score of 230.14, which was just behind sixth place. 
which went to Jimmy Ma. Oh my gosh, Jimmy Ma skated in the last group. I know. Jimmy Ma in the last group. Love to see it. So, so good. And he was just so happy to be in the last group. He was saying it's just such an honor to skate with all of these people in the last group. And oh, Jimmy Ma is such a legend. He is the meme of men skating in the best way possible. He skates in the same rink as Alexei Krasnoshan, Spencer Howe, and Emily Chan, as well as Hannah Harrell. Uh, his coaches are Alexei Latov and Olga Ganacheva. He came 10th in Skate America, so this competition was a big improvement for him. Huge improvement. Yeah, big improvement for him. Um, his short program was to come together by Gary Clark Jr. Um, I'm loving this whole like jazz vibe that the men have got going on in their music choices. Like big fan, big fan. Um, anyway, hand down on the opening quad toe, scratchy landing on the triple axle, but it was done. Um, I put in my notes, uh, his axles are like when a, a dryer has too big of a load and it starts spinning like wildly and with a lot of like centrifugal force on the outside that's what his triple axle looks like to me <laughs> oh my gosh and then the dryer starts squealing yeah that's what just... happens to my dryer maybe it's just maybe i just have a broken dryer i just <laughs> realized that i could potentially have a broken dryer <laughs> um i thought it was it was so chaotic because uh but he is chaotic and i love it it's, oh my gosh okay when when in the music, the lyric comes on, I love you and you love me. He literally points to you and me. And I was like, of course <laughs> you do. Of course. Uh, he it. also stuck his tongue out. His tongue got a lot of airtime outside of his mouth uh, during the step <laughs> sequence. Classic Jimmy, of course. We had a lot of like um, rocker hand symbols. Um, I love him so much. In the kiss and cry, he goes... I could have done better, but you know, we'll full send it tomorrow. And then after saying full that, he, like, I can't feel my face starts playing in the arena and he just sings along, like audibly sings along. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, amazing. Um, his he, he scored 82.30 in the short program and the PCS showed a range of scores. Like judges three and five gave him like uh, from mid sixes to low sevens and others gave him like high sevens to mid eights. Judge six like chucked him a 9.00 for interpretation of the music <laughs> while um, somebody else chucked in a 6.5 for interpretation of the music. And I'm like... Judge Six knew what was up. Like, did you see the tongue <laughs> hanging out of the mouth? Like, that's the interpretation of the music. Judge Six, me. he was probably smack in front of Judge Six when he pointed to you and me. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Judge Six got all the love, and the six point five was like jealousy because they didn't so get a jealous. Point. <laughs> that's it. It's due to jealousy. The range of scores. All right. Free skate to the Catalyst by Lincoln Park. Jimmy in his hoodie. Jimmy in his hoodie. <laughs> put it in his bio jimmy and his hoodie he unleashed some expletives on live national television which is very on brand this was probably one of my favorite moments of the entire event um <laughs> this free skate in general um and we'll tell you why so he opened up with a beautiful quad toe triple toe and he got plus threes and plus fours in goe well done but then he popped um his second quad toe into a double but then he went on and did a triple axle double toe, triple axle, triple loop, triple flip, and a triple Lutz Euler triple sow. So, like, really good technical content. Um, but then he does all of that. Then he falls in his choreo sequence on a 540. And <laughs> it's the most Jimmy Ma thing to do. <laughs> but my favorite bit wasn't while he was skating. It was coming off the ice because coming off the ice he looks at the kiss and cry wall and just screams ah that's my dog <laughs> um, <laughs> and then like he also sits in the kiss and cry and says hi to everybody on discord and i'm like okay everybody on, on discord, discord sure. what kind of discord is he in wait can we please speculate what kind of discord jimmy ma is in? i want to be in this discord chat <laughs> what discord is it like a jimmy ma themed discord if it's just his family then okay but if it's a jimmy ma themed discord <laughs> I want to get invited. I need to be in it. Um, Send the Discord invite. Please, Jimmy Ma <laughs> at Let's Get Down Pod. Um, <laughs> he also said, I did myself dirty on the 540, I have to admit, but I did <laughs> promise I'd send it. And I'm like, well, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. Accurate statement. 
and then he drops an expletive or like he tried to cover it up but it was already too far gone um (laughs) and it's on nbc live and he his reaction to being in first place was oh shit um (laughs) Which is amazing. Like he tried to cover it up, but the she had already come out, so everybody knew. The but Discord was probably goes, on fire. <laughs> yes, and then leaving the kiss and cry. This is a whole adventure story. Somebody <laughs> write a book about this. Leaving the kiss and cry, he's, he goes, Winry, his dog. Winry, I love you. Daddy's gonna be home soon, and I fucking lost it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jimmy Ma will be the one to save Bugs Land. <laughs> I've got it. It's the narrative. Uh, we love Jimmy Ma. I mean, he got a level two step sequence, uh, flying camel spin level two, a change foot combination spin level two, which oh, no. <laughs> change sit spin level three. Like a lot of points on the table, but who cares when you're Jimmy Ma? <laughs> yeah. I think, okay, I think there is one very, very sweet part to this free skate. Um, apparently in an interview, a uh, quote on style on Twitter was that he was pointing up at the end of the free skate and no one really knew why but apparently it was a tribute to lincoln park's chester bennington who if you did not know very tragically died of suicide um it was just it was really nice uh to end the program that way absolutely and very in character for jimmy i really enjoyed the lincoln park program actually pretty much as i enjoy any program where you can see the skater enjoying it for obvious reasons and he landed himself in sixth which is so 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 good so well done Jimmy and let's move on to our fifth place finisher and that is Maxim Naumov he is 19 coached by Vadim Naumov and Yevgenia Shishkova he came eighth in Skate America and fifth here so great improvement Uh, his USFS bio says that he competed in gymnastics for the first four years of his skating he also enjoys watching and following hockey uh, as I also do as a Canadian, eating my ketchup chips. Uh, he rides his bike, listens to music, plays video games, and watches Netflix. That um, is a Tinder bio right there. That is a Tinder bio. Um, his short program, oh my gosh, his costume is literally, me and my husband literally said this to each other, it's like when it's Aurora Borealis night and yeah. Animal Crossing. True, very true. It's literally exactly like that. I like it though. It's fine. I've seen worse. Yeah. Um, he really gets great height on his jumps. He jumps huge. Yeah, he does. Um, his short program was really phenomenal. I think it was um, so much better than Skate America. Um, huge jumps, solid landings. Uh, the scores, though, were really all over the place. Yeah, um, he didn't try a quad in the short program. But in his PCS especially, Judge 3 really didn't like him, giving him a range between 6.75 and 7.25, whilst most of the other judges sat between 7.5 and 8.25. Nevertheless, he did score a PB in the short with 83.53. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of his jump technique, his skating skills, this music choice. Yeah, uh, his free skate music was very Makar Ignatov. Very. <laughs> it was very... <laughs> dramatic very morose i liked it though probably because um if you guys follow the dance world brian olay did a solo to unstoppable which was part of oh my gosh yes yes. part of maxim's music so i was familiar with the music and i was like yeah let's go but we got some powerful zigzag going on here for his costume and i was like "Uh, i like it it's a lot it's 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 kind of like when I first started using the iPad app procreate like when I very first got my iPad and you figure out that when you hold down the line it becomes a straight line and not like yeah (laughs) and then you just make like lines all over your Mm piece that's literally what is what it's costume like yes uh he skated to unstoppable which is by ES posthumous and he also skated to starbat matter I think that's how I say it by wood kid obviously (laughs) wood kid Everyone in skating loves Woodkid, although, like, fair enough, because Woodkid's great. Woodkid is great. True. Triple axle, double toe, had a scratchy landing on the toe, but on the solo triple axle, good landing. All level four spins and step sequence was a level four as well. Landed him fifth in the free skate, fifth overall, 
with 160.67 for the free skate and 244.20 overall. Yeah, this is such a big improvement for him over Skate America. I think he is a lot to be proud of. He's just 19, so he has a lot of time to improve. Um, in the free skate, I did see him losing steam a little bit, um, but he did mm-hmm. really manage to pull it together uh, for the step sequence. And I think he has a lot to be proud of here. It was a really good nationals for him. Yeah, he definitely was so happy at the end of that free program. So great job, Maxime. And in fourth place. Oh my gosh, this is totally the men's national underdog I story. Know. I love him. 22 points above fifth place. And this is, of course, Yaroslav Paniot, 23 years old, coached by Todd Eldridge, formerly representing Ukraine. He started representing the US as of the 2019-2020 season. Oh my god, Yaro had such a good competition. So, so, so good. He's also my favorite dancer in the Kiss and Cry. Like, he was just, yes. like, dancing so much. I was like, are you not tired? But, I mean, we love a Kiss and Cry dancer. On adrenaline. Like, did you see how he skated? Definitely so on adrenaline. Happy. He gives me so the happy. same vibes as, like, a villain in, like, a CW teenage show. He <laughs> should have been cast as uh, Jughead in Riverdale instead of... Cole Sprouse. <laughs> I-, I could so see it, but... I I absolutely love him. So his short program was to sway by Michael Bublé. And I saw so many people hating on Michael Bublé. And I'm just like, come on. Michael Bublé is Stop great. It. Sway is also it's great. It's winter. He's outside of his house. That's when Michael <laughs> Bublé comes out is for the holiday season. Be nice. Be nice. But also, like, Sway is a killer of a track. So, like, don't complain. Sway's great. <laughs> the costume was also – I enjoyed it. I mean, it was a very simple, like, penguin suit. But I enjoyed it. Really fit the theme. Um, he, I, I swear, I had a mini heart attack when he did his quad flip triple toe because that quad flip gets so oh my gosh, much height. So he jumps so big. Oh my god! Speaking of big jumpers, he's another one. So big. He needs to. I definitely need to go take the lessons from him. But oh, insane. Um, not great GOE on the quad flip triple toe though because of the landings. But anyway, huge triple axel as well, and. There was a like an up tempo switch in the music for the step sequence, and I was like, "This is fire! I absolutely love this music cut." And it's something, of course, that Misha Gay, the choreographer, would have done. So I'm loving Misha's work this season. It's so 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 good. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I I really really I really enjoyed him. He just had such a good competition. Um, he does. You can see him thinking really hard, though, when he jumps. And he looks so mm-hmm. serious on the ice, which is such a big contrast <laughs> to how he is in the kissing cry. Because <laughs> in the kissing cry, he's like, oh, my gosh, so much energy. I'm going to bop. But he just looks like he's focusing very, very hard. That's which is good. great. I mean, if there was That's ever a time good. to focus, right, that this would definitely be while you're doing your programs. Yeah. All of you focus during your program. <laughs> Um, however, in the free skate, he was third and he was only 0.36 points under Vincent Joe in the free skate. Like, that's wild. That is wild. And he skated to an Elvis Presley medley. His costume was very Elvis. Misha also did a great job with this choreography. And this was honestly probably the highlight free skate for me of the men's event. It was a stellar performance so 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 good it was like big 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 applause like he so makes good. such a good elvis like could you imagine the audience if there was an audience oh my god all yeah. we had was uh the flat flower crown mariah bell body but <laughs> i'm sure they were living it up petition for yarrow to keep this program for the olympic season oh my like god, imagine. please it's like the arena would go wild especially with that opening quad flip just solo quad flip humongous huge humongous Got plus 2.86 goe um nuts he followed it up with a quad toe triple toe another quad toe in the middle of his program went on to do a triple lutz euler triple flip another triple lutz and a triple loop double toe i'm not sure if the final loop combo was supposed to be a triple triple or a triple double nonetheless this is what a nationals moment looks like And I was so happy for him. Such a great competition. If that final combo had been a triple-triple, he would have beat Vincent in the free skate. Oh, 
nuts. Although the GOEs sat, like for the jumps, the GOEs sat around plus one through to plus three only. Like three, plus three was the max he got on jumps, which was like, I can see it. But also if the Federation had more backing for him, you know that. Those GOEs would have been higher for sure. You know that those GOEs would be four and five. Um, Probably this is more in line with international scoring. Nevertheless, still great scores. 183.23 for the free skate, which gave him 266.97 overall. Those are great scores. So happy for Yaroslav Paniot. Definitely got a new fan. Oh my gosh. Love him. Let's move on to our bronze medalist. Oh, okay. Our sweet, sweet man, Jason Brown. Okay, I'm just going to do it. Cinnamon is so good. Cinnamon <laughs> is a masterpiece. my socks off. Blew the roof off my house. It's so genius. It is choreographed by Roheen Ward. Roheen, like, oh my God. Oh. Roheen and Jason. What a match. What a match. This is truly a masterpiece. It's very, very genius. Jason did say I saw today that he's keeping this program for the Olympic season. Oh, thank goodness. Thank. Oh, it honestly, if you guys haven't watched it, I'm sure you've watched it, but go watch it like probably 50 million more times. Like we have yeah, highest PCS of the night. He scored almost all tens across the board for interpretation of the music and composition. The only categories without a 10 were skating skills and transitions. And I'm like, boo. But I mean, almost perfect PCS with 48.80. And in his jumps, uh, like technical elements, no GOE was lower than a plus three on any element. Accurate. The majority were plus four and plus five, also accurate. And oh, the choreography is, and Jason is sublime. He did a triple flip, triple axle, triple it's triple toe. Oh, I, mm, I, I, I can't. I don't I'm know probably, words. I don't it, know I words. send it to a different dimension. Pretty much like. I, I would have words, but they would all be expletives, so... <laughs> and we'll save those for Jimmy. Small James. <laughs> I don't even know if his full name is James. He could just be a Jimmy. <laughs> he could. Um, my mom actually said that Jason is the modern age Paul Wiley, and I was like, you know what? I will take that 100%. Both of them are gorgeous to watch. They have excellent skating skills, and oh, any, anyone and everyone raved about Cinnamon, so... It's perfection, really. He did score 100.92. He cracked the 100 mark. Love it. Love to see um, it. He was third after the short program, but that's because the top two uh, really pulled out the quads. So they just beat him on the technical side. But of course, Jason won on PCS. So as he should. However, there was not that much of a gap between him and Vincent in PCS. I was like, really? But it's not to say that Jason didn't deserve what he got. I just think that the gap between him and Vincent should have been more <laughs> than it was. Vincent did get 76.30, if you guys are wondering, but we will talk about him in a little bit. Let's talk about Jason's free skate, and it's to Slaughter on 10th Avenue by Richard Rogers, choreographed by David Wilson. So first of all, he really tried on the quad toe. He gave it everything he had but it just wasn't quite there one day when he lands it we will all lose our brains there is video of him landing a quad toe attempt in training slash warm-up so we know he can land it not sure if it was fully rotated or not but he can land on it he can and one day he will in competition and like i was saying we will all lose our brains i really like this program but it's such a contrast to his short program because you can really tell that the short program is really his. Um, it's really just a part. It feels like an extension of his body. His short program does. Yeah. It It's so comfortable for him. It's just really a part of how his body moves and feels when he listens to that music. But I just didn't get that from this free skate. It's not mm -hmm. a bad free skate. No. But no, compared no. to the short program, it's just not quite there. Um, he also had a really unfortunate pop on his triple axle, yeah. and he specifically cannot afford to pop his jumps because he doesn't have the base value for technical content that uh, Nathan and Vincent do. Um, so, yeah, he really could not afford losing those points on the axle. Um, but, I okay, so I personally think 
Sinnerman and Schindler's List should go to the Olympics for Jason. Okay. I think he should bring those two into Olympic season. I mean, he did say that he's not sure whether he's going to keep Slaughter on 10th Avenue and he might, there were talks about going back to an old program, so maybe it's Schindler's List. But yeah, he did say himself that he he struggled a little bit with connecting with this free skate. Uh, so that probably came across in this event. But yeah, that that pop of the triple axle really cost him a lot of points because if he landed it, we know he would have gotten not only the base value, but really good GOE. And that would definitely, considering Vincent's mistakes, put him up there and really in contention for that silver. But uh, good attempt on the quad toe. I'm just, I'm very happy that he attempted it. Triple flip, lovely. The rest of his jumps, lovely. Edges, obviously gorgeous. He was putting on a skating skills masterclass the entire weekend. Uh, he left some points on the table though with his step sequence. It was only called a level three. The choreo sequence was amazing. Though that knee slide into the final spin was just, oh, chef's kiss. Judge two though gave it a plus four. Where like everyone else gave it a plus five. I'm like, excuse you. Excuse you. <laughs> Please. Where are your eyes? Please. Exactly. Um, he also lost a level in his change foot combo spin. Everything else was level four. I mean, his two earth spins were level four. He came fourth in the free skate with 176.10. Overall scored 276.92. Yes. I mean, I really just love Sinner Man. I think I've literally watched it like 15 times. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. I'm going to watch it after we record this and probably during editing. and <laughs> Just have it on in the background. Exactly. It's just so good. At Worlds, if the judges don't give him 50 for the PCS, like, swear. I'm going to riot. Um, <laughs> riot, like, in my bedroom during long <laughs> Right, in our bedroom <laughs> during long <laughs> All right, let's 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 move on to our silver medalist and resident poet for the USFS, and that is Vincent Zhou. Yeah, he skated to Vincent in the short program. <laughs> we love Vincent skating to Vincent. Every like, single time never I give, say that. Never give that up. Uh, yeah, me too, me too. I think that this program is so nice for him. You can tell that he really likes it because he seems very happy, and I feel like Vincent never really exudes a ton of happiness. Uh, this is... I think this is my favorite short program that he has ever done. Uh, his GOEs were way up there and very well deserved because his uh, quad lots with the triple toe is so floaty. So good. It's amazing. I love it. He he does, like as a pet peeve, he does have a toe axle. However, the quad lots triple toe was so great. He also did a quad sow and a triple axle. And I was just like, wasn't that just freaking gorgeous? Like so nice so to watch. Nice. Um, he scored 107.79, very, very happy with that score. He was like thanking, like profusely thanking everyone in the Kiss and Cry after he got that. Uh, but yeah, so he did score 46.30 in his PCS. And I think that Vincent is a very, he, he does express, but it feels like very internal almost like, and I think that's his vibe. That's his vibe. That is his vibe. Definitely. He doesn't perform out to the back row, but you can tell that he's performing like almost for himself, which is like a different type of performance, but you can really tell he enjoys the program. Like whether or not he's performing to the back row or performing outwardly, you can tell that the presentation skills are there. He just prefers, I guess, to have it a bit more inwards. And I think that's very fitting to his personality. But I yeah. just find it a little sus, mildly sus, that Jason got 48.8 on his PCS and Vincent got 46.3. That's not the gap that I would have had between them. But that's because Jason should have gotten like 60 million thousand points. 60 like, million thousand points. That's the max it. is 50 and Jason should have gotten 80. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's accurate. That, that's the deserved score. Um, Vincent's free skate was to Algorithm by Muse. He started off with a quad Lutz triple toe that got plus fours and plus fives, even though the Lutz had an E for the wrong edge. I, okay, I really have to make a comment about his costume. This costume, it has the same cut and the same silhouette as Nathan's shirt that Nathan borrowed from Shailen Bourne, <laughs> but it's literally like that TikTok sound that goes, add a little spice, <laughs> and then it's like, then you get Nathan. Vincent's shirt because then it's there's color and there's glitter. 
<laughs> what is the I'm theme not cut? a fan of Vincent's costumes. No, like, I am not for the really short a program, fan. like it's a gorgeous it's a gorgeous piece of music and he has this like cowl neck going on and I'm like mm, you're not a 75 year old lady <laughs> like Vincent <laughs> Vincent I don't mind the ombre I just think that it needs to be a different neckline the ombre is fine I love the ombre it looks ombre almost like a bodysuit but I think the cowl neck really needs to be left in 2005 <laughs> <laughs> definitely anyway uh the free skate he did a quad sow triple axel and then fell on his second quad lutz attempt which oh. i was actually surprised by the quad lutz was called under but he did this halfway through the program like very ambitious but going into it i thought he was going for a triple lutz because just the vibe of it i don't know if he was second guessing himself in his head but going into it he didn't seem it didn't seem as if he was going fast enough for a quad lutz but yeah that cost him a lot of points um Triple Axel Double Toe came later, Triple Lutz Oilet Triple Sow, and then he let it all loose and out in the choreo sequence, which was really, really nice to see, like very passionate and yeah, really adds to his performance. But Jackie Wong on Twitter said that the single flip, which he popped that I didn't mention, but he did pop a flip and the fall on the second Lutz would cost him around 20 points, which is steep, especially if you're trying to compete with Nathan, right? He also left points on the table with a few spins, dropping levels just to a level three, but still every point counts. Um, But yeah, he scored 183.59 with an overall score of 291.38. Yes. So that put Vincent in second place for nationals. And of course, our gold medalist, Nathan Chen, no surprise there, but actually a couple of surprises in his actual programs that were not expected mistakes so let's start off with his short program and before i start with a short program there like i said before there's literally a flat cartoon hamster in the audience that says nathan chen (laughs) there were a lot of hamsters holding up nathan chen signs so like whoever paid money for that to be in the front row as well front row hamster we've seen it all (laughs) front row hamster we appreciate you um I do love Asturias. I I quite love this short program. It's different from most his most recent like modern slash contemporary short programs, which I absolutely love. But I like this. Like it's it's comparing apples and oranges really. But he look it wasn't his best uh, short program that he's done. It was just shy I feel of like his one hundred percent. But scratchy toe landing on the quad lutz, fantastic quad flip triple toe though. Triple axel went off without a hitch. And that 540 jump at the end, like we see the dancers do. I'm such a fan of a 540, to be honest. It looks so cool. Yeah. He actually said in one of his interviews that he is actually not a super fan of this short program. The quote was, I'm pretty sure I won't do the same style of my short program. It's a great program. And Shay, Shaylin Boren, did a great job with it. But I'm just not as comfortable with that direction. So it doesn't look like we'll be seeing this program for the Olympic season. And that's fine. I feel like he's definitely more comfortable with the more modern contemporary stuff like Nemesis, which is honestly one of my favorite programs of all time because it's so good. Um, uh, and even our little shimmy caravan is all awesome. oh my gosh like, whiplash the is one shimmy. of his favorite movies so like that's why it's probably really comfortable for him but i'm excited to see what him and shaylin i think maybe shaylin will choreograph again probably um i'm excited to see what they come up with for next season because any new nathan chen program i'm excited to see and please bring back uh rocket man because that was epic oh, i love rocket man i i think it's his gala program though now like i think it's I think it's like solidly the Gallo program, which breaks my heart because I no, love No, it's Rocket fine Man. though, because he can he can show it in the Gala. It's not completely gone. It's fine. Uh, speaking of Shaylin Bourne, though, it's so funny because Nathan is totally trolling us in interviews. Um, so to uh, begin the story, uh, he has a new shirt for his Philip Glass medley free skate. Um, it's Basically, it's a black shirt and it has cutouts, Um, but it looks like he there's a mesh shirt that he puts underneath. And there's a tweet that literally said it's from Shay's closet. So he literally got this shirt. And I've seen the video of Shay wearing it. Yeah. And in the video of Shay wearing it, she doesn't have that mesh underneath, which is why I think that he had put a mesh shirt or like a mesh lining underneath. Um, But it's very much diesel brand from 2008 like it's that vibe you get it at the same stores as ed hardy and guest brand in canada (laughs) they're 
there's this one store that I'm remembering. But of course, it's just the flappy shirt with mesh bits, the cutouts, no stones, of course. And I, one day we'll just see an exhibition where he just wears basketball shorts. <laughs> Literally, he said in an interview, as you know, I like to go very extravagant with my costumes. And Nathan <laughs> Chen is a whole troll. He's trolling <laughs> us. Big sarcasm. And I, it's great. So many black costumes in the free skate for the men. So many. Or just in the whole men's competition. Unfortunately, his free skate to uh, medley of Philip Glass music didn't get a perfect TES sheet like he did in the short program. He flipped out of the opening quad Lutz. Minus fours, minus threes. It was not good. But then he came back with a quad flip triple toe, a triple Lutz that I think he just didn't want to do the quad lots. Um, he did a quad south. Like the landings looked a bit wobbly today by Nathan's standard, but I feel like he picked it up towards the end of the program with a quad toe oiler triple flip and a quad toe triple toe. But although he like, he eked that triple toe out cause the quad toe landing was very like forward. I feel like that is just kind of how he was skating this whole competition in general. Yeah. His posture mm-hmm. was a little bit more hunched over than he normally is. And normally he does kind of have that chin to chest kind of looking uh, way of his carriage. Um, but he was really kind of more forward pitched in general, this whole competition. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's the online school. I mean, he's he's taking the year off, if I remember correctly. So that's not even a... Yeah an issue here I don't know maybe it's pandemic stuff he did say that he was skating quite timid um and he was just like yeah that's that's my fault and yeah he definitely wasn't happy with himself he ended up getting two spin violations or like feature violations in a spin but his step sequence was good uh level four with plus fours and plus fives for his goe but yeah at the end of his program he looked really kind of disappointed with himself and was just like fuck (laughs) and i was just like nathan (laughs) nathan you're not jimmy ma i reckon they'll be great friends though they can wear basketball shorts together they definitely could but he knew he didn't skate his best so that that reflected it but uh, like we know it was still enough he scored 208.36 in the free skate and 322.28 overall he definitely said in press conferences that he just what he didn't feel all there this competition but he was still like very grateful for his placing and happy like overall with what he did and just appreciating every single moment he skates because I mean he's already talking about life after skating and he is going to take time off after the 2022 Olympics to focus and finish up on his studies so we only have a bit more of Nathan to go oh my gosh don't say that rude (laughs) rude (laughs) rude I won't accept it. (laughs) I guess that brings us to the end of the men's event and the end of our U.S. Nationals recap. Why don't we move into the kiss and cry? Yes. The book that we have chosen for this episode is in honor of Jason Brown and his Slaughter on 10th Avenue program. It is the book The Boy in the Red Dress by Kristen Lambert. It's an own voices, queer, historical murder mystery. Set in 1920s New Orleans, we meet Millie, an amateur detective who has taken over running the show at the Cloak and Dagger Speakeasy in the French Quarter while her aunt is out of town. Marion is the club's star performer and drag queen. But Marion comes under suspicion when a young socialite is found dead in the club's courtyard. With disguises, failed schemes, code breaking and clue hunting, Millie and her friends that she gathers along the way fight to defend those who are silenced and aren't able to defend themselves. This book is empowering, satisfying and challenges the typical notions of who is seen as guilty and who is seen as innocent. The Boy in the Red Dress is gritty, charming and keeps you guessing to the very end. That's The Boy in the Red Dress by Kristen Lambert. Yay, that really brings us to the end of our Nationals recap. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So much. But we are so grateful for the weekend of skating that US Nationals gave us. Thank you so much to USFS for putting this event on, especially putting the athletes and everyone there, athlete staff, everyone 
their health and safety as a priority. So very, very thankful to all the people who are involved in getting this event up and running. Definitely. Like at Skate America, I think that they did everything that they could to take COVID precautions. I mean, the only other precaution that I think they could have taken is to just not have the competition at all, which could be argued for. But nevertheless, if we are going to have a competition, I think that they did everything that they could with the bubble that the skaters were in. So I am very thankful for that. And I think the athletes were super thankful to get some more competition ice under their feet. Yes. And with that, we will end our episode. I'm Claudia and come chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That's L-U-T-Z, Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, shoot us an email at letsgetdownpod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and appreciate both shirts from Shailen Bourne's Closet and Nike Dry Fit <laughs> shirts, please leave us a review and give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you all so much for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.